This is five on your side at six, focused on you. Tonight, a Lincoln County man is being hailed a hero for stepping in to stop an attack. Investigators say the innocent bystander tried to protect a woman who was being stabbed in a parking lot. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. The attack happened this morning in Moscow Mills in the parking lot of Daddy Ray's Commercial Bakery. Justina Cornell reports live from Lincoln County tonight. Justina. Mike and Ann, this all happened before 9 this morning, and we arrived to the scene shortly after that. When we arrived, we saw investigators on the parking lot behind me here, and then we saw two cars get towed away. The neighbor called me and said there was something really big going on that all these fire trucks and ambulances and polices were rushing down here. That's when Linda Austin made her way to Daddy Ray's Baking Company. There's two cars crashed, sort of uh, one is into the other. That to me says somebody was being chased or something was going on that they lost control and ran into the car. We still don't know what led up to this crash in the parking lot. What we do know is that two people were stabbed here Wednesday morning. The, the incident began here on the parking lot. Uh, the, the female victim, we believe, was the, the primary victim. The male victim was, uh, was, was here just present. I believe he was an employee, and he intervened to, to help her, and he then was stabbed while he was uh, assisting. Authorities were able to quickly take action and make an arrest. The person responsible for the stabbing was immediately taken into custody, and two persons, a male and a female, were treated for stab injuries. It's a troubling situation for Linda Austin. We just live literally right on the other side. Our units back up to all of this. When you start seeing crime units and sheriffs and all of this all over, it's like, okay, what's going on? It's too close to home. <laughs> she only hopes for a swift recovery. I'm hoping that everybody's okay. In this harrowing situation, Sheriff Rick Harrell is looking at the positives. I think the, the encouraging point is that, that when, when this occurred, that lo local people that was just here at, at the scene jumped in to, to stop uh, a further tragedy from happening this morning. It could have been much worse. And I think, I believe that the, the young man that was stabbed, I believe that, that he's a hero. At this early stage, I think he was. And the sheriff tells me that the male victim is stable and he was able to talk to the woman's family and they say they are pleased with her progress. Reporting live in Lincoln County, Justina Cornell, five on your side. Right now, St. Louis police are investigating a shooting that left one man dead and another seriously hurt. Diamond Palmer joins us live with more from St. Louis Police Headquarters. Diamond. Well, and tonight we have learned from police that the driver of that vehicle that fled the scene from the shooting has been arrested. Tonight we are also learning that the second man shot in this incident is now in critical condition with life threatening injuries. Now the shooting happened around 10 a.m. this morning in the 900 block of Dock Street, not too far from the McKinley Bridge. The shooting happened near the St. Louis Empowerment Center. Two men were shot. One was pronounced dead at the scene and the other one was critically hurt. After the shooting, police chased the driver of a silver SUV and eventually arrested the 36 year old driver. Witnesses at the scene tell me they heard at least six gunshots. You know, we called the, the police and the ambulance right away. Um, and uh, then the driver was trying to get people to help him get the other person out of the car. And um, no one was willing to, to do that, obviously, because we we're waiting for the police to get here. And so they pulled him out of the car and um, the driver took off and actually ran over his legs as as they were escaping. Now, another witness on the scene describes the incident as chaotic. He does confirm to us, though, that there was an argument that happened before the shooting. Police tell us this evening that this is an ongoing investigation and anyone with information is urged to call Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. Reporting live here at police headquarters, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. The sheriff of Iron County, Missouri, has resigned. Sheriff Jeffrey Burkett announced his resignation on the same day he was supposed to appear at an impeachment trial. Five on your side's Christine Byers has been following this case for months and learned more about why the sheriff stepped down. Almost a year ago, Jeff Burkett, along with two of his deputies, were charged with multiple crimes, including street gang activities and kidnapping. Washington County prosecutors alleged they were helping an influential resident, Rick Gaston, kidnap his children from their mother. Gabe Crocker is Burkett's attorney. Several of these charges, not only against my client, but against the other defendants, have already been dismissed. 
In June, Attorney General Andrew Bailey filed a lawsuit to remove Burkett from office. The impeachment trial was supposed to begin Wednesday, but Burkett resigned before it could. We knew well in advance that when my client resigned, it was going to be, you know, a lot of his detractors would be celebrating in the streets. Bailey took a victory lap in a statement issued just hours after Burkett's resignation. He wrote he resigned because he knew we were going to win at trial this week. If he has nothing to hide, then why did he resign? Because this is not the venue to argue whether or not he has something to hide. He has nothing to hide. He's innocent of all charges. As his defense attorney, I'm not going to expose our defenses. Uh, and I'm also not going to have my client testify in a civil trial that serves absolutely no purpose other than to determine whether or not he should stay in office. Crocker says his client hasn't ruled out the possibility of running for sheriff or even a county commissioner position once his criminal trial is over. Christine Byers, five on your side. New charges tonight against a former police officer accused of being a serial sex offender. The FBI announcing today Marcellus Blackwell will face a total of 36 charges. A federal indictment says he sexually assaulted 19 out of the 80 men he arrested or detained while working as an officer with the North County Police Cooperative. There is a hotline that the FBI set up for victims to call. That number is 314-589-2682. Leaders from St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and St. Charles met about public safety today. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, was at that meeting. And, Mark, these leaders didn't exactly see eye to eye on everything before the meeting. So what is the consensus after? Yeah, an understatement there. Mayor Tashara Jones had just canceled plans to travel to Jefferson City for a political fight yesterday, where she intended to lobby against Republican pushes for a state takeover of the police and to slash the city's earnings tax. Both of those issues followed her to a downtown conference room this morning, where a St. Charles Republican raised concerns about police staffing levels. How do we beef, beef up the police? St. Charles County Executive Steve Elman stressed the need for more police at Wednesday's East-West Gateway Council of Governments. Can we bring in the Highway Patrol to help police uh, the streets? Can we have other jurisdictions assist, not maybe on the street, but uh, on, on other matters? I don't know. Uh, Steve is entitled to his opinion, um, but we can't enforce our way out of this. Mayor Tashara Jones responded to Elman, who pressed Police Chief Robert Tracy on his current staffing levels. 940. 940, okay. There's a crisis in the United States. There's a crisis in every police department, every big police department in the United States as far as hiring and all the interruptions after the pandemic and after the George Floyd murder. Tracy says he's seen depleted departments still improve safety back in the early 1990s. We had less officers then, but what we had is a good plan. This chief wants more police officers and we're doing everything we can to do it. The chief says the force needs more officers. Do you agree with them? Well, we have a, a budgeted uh, a strength at 1224, and I support the police in hiring to that budgeted strength. But hovering over the city budget? I offered a, a bill 30 years ago to do away with the earnings tax. A renewed GOP plan to end the city's earnings tax. These people right now pay an earnings tax, and they also pay all their other taxes, uh, but yet they're not getting the security that they that they need in their neighborhood. In a recent news conference, Board of Alderman President Megan Green said a move like that could put added financial pressure on police. That is a real threat, and any plans to slash the earnings tax without a plan to replace that revenue is reckless. It's reckless for our citizens and it's reckless for our region. It all boils down to funding for the police. Elman grew frustrated during that meeting today at one point, interjecting to blurt out, is anyone interested in what we think? He feels the city could dedicate too many officers to assist in social programs and perhaps take them away from their regular beats. After that meeting, Mayor Jones also addressed the ongoing issues at Bar PM in South City. The bar suffered serious damage after a police car crashed into it in December. Now people who own the building the bar is located in say the city is threatening to condemn it if repairs aren't made. We absolutely are, do not have any intention on condemning or closing Bar PM. This is a standard letter that has to go out from the building division so Bar PM can file its uh, insurance claims to get the money that it needs. The St. Louis Building Commissioner Frank Oswald says repairs need to be made by February 19th. Ten items or less, the area grocery store is cracking down on who can use self-checkout lanes. And we have some warmer weather ahead for tomorrow, surprisingly so, but then changes for the weekend.